Hi, everyone. Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Instagram Marketing for Barbers and Beauty Pros. I am Julia. I'm here on behalf of Booksy, and I'm here with the amazing Christy Clips, who is going to be our guide today and our guru on everything Instagram marketing related. Thank you so much for joining us, Christy. Thank you, Julia, for having me. Oh, my God. I'm so excited for today. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is going to be awesome. So everyone, we have got a presentation and sometimes we'll put the presentation up and sometimes we'll have Christy up just like this. And I am going to drop something in the chat right now. I am dropping the word here. And if you have any questions for Christy as we go, you can put them in the chat right where it says here and we will just be answering them. We'll be handing them over to Christy to answer as we go. That's also where we'll be dropping some amazing links about some awesome stuff that we have going on right now. So, okay, I'm going to go on mute. I'm going to hand it over to you, Christy, to just sort of introduce yourself and take it away. All right. All right, guys. So it's been a while. Um, I hope that all of you guys are having a good Monday. Um, so I'm coming on here today to speak a little bit about uh, Instagram and marketing and everything that has to do with marketing and your presence online. So um, I wanted to get up here and put on, if we can put on the presentation and just start with me introducing myself. Um, a little bit about me. So my name's Christy, and uh, I go by Christy Clips. Uh, my full name's Christina Montalvo. Uh, about me, I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. I graduated from a trade high school with my barber, with my cosmetology and my uh, high school diploma. So for for me, it was free to go to uh, cosmetology school. Um, I've been a cosmetologist, licensed uh, cosmetologist for 14 years, um, and I wanted to add that my first job out of school, out of hair school and high school, was Supercuts, um, and I specialize in men's haircuts. Also, uh, we can go on to the next slide. And here's a little bit about me and uh, my story. Um, so in 2008, that is when I got my uh, cosmetology license. That is when I started my whole hair career. Um, that's when I started at Supercuts. I spent a little bit of time there, just you know, building up my confidence, um, getting clients in, learning new haircuts, getting training. Uh, they do actually. I'm not doing any like sponsorships or anything with Supercuts, but they have an awesome. Um, an awesome training program. So if you are just fresh out of high school, I mean, out of uh, hair school, you can go there and they have an amazing, amazing training program that uh, they have uh, educators, hair educators working with you one-on-one -on -one to learn all, you know, your, your basic haircuts. Cause I know now in, in cosmetology or barber, barber school, um, they don't really go into depth in haircuts and all that. Um, I know for me, I learned a lot of the theory end of things. Um, so stepping into Supercuts, thank God um, that, you know, they had some type of training program. Um, I was fortunate enough to get practice from my, fam my family. I have um, about five people in my family that are hairdressers or barbers. So they kind of, you know, shifted and, and and paved that path for me to kind of, hey, go here, do this, do that. This is where you can get training at. Uh, but I wanted to start off there at Supercuts. Um, next thing here. Um, so fast forward a little, a, a couple years in 2015. That's when I kind of decided, you know, I want to go on my own. And I got a lot of practice uh, there at the salon that I was at, at Supercuts. And so I wanted to start my own business. I wanted to work for myself. I felt pretty confident in my haircuts. I felt pretty confident um, in business. I learned the ins and outs of, of the salon. Um, when I left, I was a manager, uh, a district manager at that corporation, the Supercuts Corp Corporation. So I felt that I knew how to you know, manage the business side and actually work as, you know, a cosmetologist and, and specialize in men's haircuts. Um, in 2015 also, that is when, I don't know if you guys remember, but that's when social media started, you know, it, it was a boom, a social media boom. And that is when I started uh, putting up my work, my haircuts. And back then, uh, you didn't see a lot of 
uh, women in barbering. Um, but I would put up, I didn't put up that I was a barber, but I did put up my haircuts and my fades. And my haircuts look like a barber's uh, haircuts because they didn't teach that in cosmetology, but I kind of taught, you know, that's when I taught myself. So I got a lot of exposure on my Instagram with uh, just posting every day my haircuts, my fades, where I worked, um, you know, kind of behind the scenes, you know, day to day. And so I got uh, asked on on Instagram, I, they reached out to me to see if I wanted to do a showcase. And the first showcase, you know, was um, at the Blurry Fades Expo. And it's a really huge event up to now. Um, it was Miami. And since I'm from Texas, I was like, oh, my God, I want to go to Miami. Like, I haven't been. It's my first time there. Um, like, let's do it. So Mark, he's the owner of Blurry Fates Expo. Mark reached out and was like, hey, hey, you know, we have this opportunity. We don't have a lot of women in in barbering or, you know, anyone that can do fades, you know, like we see online. So we would love to have you and, and you know, we'll set you up on on stage and you can show everyone your skills and your fades and, you know, little tips and tricks on how you um, manage your business and how you are as a barber. So um, after that, I got a lot of exposure. There was people from all over there, uh, all over the world at that expo. Um, you know, people from New York, from uh, California, from Colorado, even from overseas, from uh, U the UK, from, I met so many people. That was the perfect place to network and just connect with everyone in the industry. Um, I got to meet, you know, the guys from Barber Evo. I got to meet um, the guys that own like 20 barber shops in Miami. Um, I got to meet uh, a lot of heavy, heavy hitters, you know, in the industry. So that was pretty cool. Um, so, you know, that's when I was networking. I was getting my name out. Um, I had my Instagram name, you know, Christy Clips. So people saw me as that was my business. That was my image. So then um, they asked me to, uh, to travel. So that's when I started traveling. Um, I got contacted by all these different brands and to be, you know, an ambassador, to be sponsored by them, to work with them, to educate with them. And that's when I joined Booksy. And we, we just, we've been there, you know, through the thick and thin from the start. Um, that's when I met everyone from Booksy and I met Stefan and um, they had a really, really awesome, you know, um, just team. So I just felt immediately like family. Um, so a little bit about that. Um, then we fast forward to COVID, to 2019, right? COVID happened. Well, let me back it up a little bit. Before COVID, I mean, everything was great. I was, you know, traveling, educating, um, doing showcases, uh, meeting more people, getting more opportunities. I got on, um, featured on magazines. I was super busy, like nonstop when I would, you know, cut hair, uh, behind the chair. I was booked up no matter what. Um, anytime I was in, the, in my suite, I was super booked up. Um, let me see. So since I was super busy, that's when I, you know, I had, the ability to raise my prices. So I wasn't, you know, nine to nine cutting hair like I would before, right? Um, I would take less clients throughout the day with the help of Booksy. Um, I would, you know, set a, a separate time for me to take clients. And then the rest of the time I would have, you know, um, time to travel and educate and do all of that. Um, I was pretty, I am pretty su successful at that, just managing my whole book because of Booksy. Um, I would block out my times on there um, to where, you know, I wasn't taking clients or I would open my, my wait list. I would open my, um, I would make sure I, I would block off time to get lunch because that was very important. Um, before Booksy, I don't think I've ever uh, had a chance to eat in the barbershop and the salon. 
only because I would say, no, 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 it's okay. I'm going to eat after this client and then I'm going to run to the back and warm up my, my food and then get a chance to eat it. Excuse me. <clears throat> that never happened. Never happened. Um, so then, you know, thank God to Booksy. I'm still alive probably. <laughs> I think Booksy. But um, so let's get back to, so I was managing my, my business with Booksy. Um, I was cutting hair. Uh, I was educating. I was traveling. Um, so it allowed me to diversify myself and be everywhere all at one time. Right. Um, so now we can get to COVID, the COVID year. So COVID happened. COVID, uh, I, I believe, is like March. Um, that's when the lockdown happened. So I was honestly freaking out. I was, you know, I was, I'm the one working for myself. I don't depend on anybody. Um, I'm a single mother. And so that was, you know, a tough, tough time for me. I was panicking. I didn't know what to do. Um, but with the help of Booksy again, uh, we were able to connect one-on-one -on -one with uh, our clients. And we would um, set up one-on-ones with, with our regular clients to help them actually trim um, their own hair at home. Or, you know, if they were letting their hair grow out, we would actually um, tell them about products that they can use, give them product knowledge. We would be able to sell them products online. Um, so I, you know, thank God for that. We, I made some money that way. And after that, you know, we can go back to the, to the slideshow. I mean the, yeah, the slides. So uh, I mentioned COVID, everything was on pause. Thank God for books that I was taking virtual clients. And then fast forward after that, we got over that. Then I went back to uh, being behind the chair part time. Uh, with the help of Booksy again, I got to manage my time and balance my work life. Um, so right now, currently, I cut hair part-time. I create content. Um, I'm in a Booksy ambassador as well. And um, I'm a full-time mom. So I can do all of those things uh, right now. We can go on to the next slide. Okay, and so this slide, I just wanted to add a couple pictures to kind of go back and, and show you what I was talking about. So that was my first um, showcase on the very left. That was like 2015. Um, <laughs> I was wearing heels. I was, uh, I was wearing heels because I was, that, that was my personality. Um, I was really girly, but I knew how to do a fade. Um, and then I was wearing that headlamp because it was really dark in there. Um, <laughs> And then I was dressed professionally, uh, but still cute. So, yeah, that was me uh, 2015 at the Blurry Fades Expo. And then fast forward to 20, I want to say, that's 2018 with a picture of the Booksy family. Um, that's a picture of my haircut up there just to show some of my work. And then that's me up there posing with the Booksy background. Uh, that's me at a Booksy event um, representing them and just talking about and sharing how my experience is with Booksy. Um, also, those are just some pictures of my work, me cutting hair, me using the razor. And then at the bottom right hand corner, that is me on stage educating. We can go on to the next slide. All right. So <clears throat> I feel like I'm going fast. Let me slow down of it. <clears throat> um, by the way, Julia, do we have any questions right now? Take we, don't, we don't have any questions yet. This is really, really fantastic. I do see some typing, so we may get some soon. One thing okay. I wanted to just quick touch on, those mm -hmm. that, that, that collage of photos that you showed there, mm -hmm. um, what would have you decide to use a particular photo like that on your Instagram versus to just use it in a story versus to use it where? Like, what would have you decide to use something where? Okay. Um, like if we go back to the photo collage. So uh, let me see. Most of these pictures are on my, uh, my Instagram page. And I wanted to put them on there to show, you know, the picture has history. So 
um, if we go look at the middle of the haircut, that would be like a before and after. So that would kind of share knowledge on what to post. Like people don't know what to post, you can post a before and after photo. Um, I can also add that on my stories. Um, but you know, if it's on your feed, then it's going to be there uh, for everyone to see all the time. And that's kind of part of your portfolio, right? Um, so the Booksy one with the whole group, I would put that on uh, stories. Um, I mean, I would use them for both. But that would be, you know, at an event, I would post that that day uh, to show that I'm with the whole crew. And um, I would probably post that on a carousel now. Um, so, I mean, every picture in here has like, you know, a little history about it. Um, but I can get into like stories and, and, and what's on your feed a little later, um, because I'm going to be talking about more of the social media. Perfect. I just wanted to draw out the, the attention on that. So thank you so much. And mm -hmm. if you haven't yet to everyone here, if you haven't yet, do make sure to check out Christy's booksy page as well, because that's a really great example, because a lot of this content that you're, as you're developing this content for your Instagram, you can really be looking at what makes sense to be putting in your booksy portfolio as well in any sort of online portfolio as clients are looking for you, you want them to be able to see that cleanly. And she has really good examples of that. So we'll go on to the next slide. I just wanted to drop that plug. Thank you, Julia. All right. So the whole reason I'm on here today is to talk about um, your online presence, right? So what I mean by that is um, to make it easy for your clients to find you, right? Um, so being number one, uh, I think that you should find a clear uh, way to put yourself out on all social media platforms. Um, here we have an example of, of me and myself and how I brand myself that way your clients can find you. Uh, on my Instagram, you can find me at Christy Clips. Uh, on my Facebook, you can find me at Christy Clips. On YouTube, TikTok, you notice how they're all the same, right? Um, I didn't add any letters or symbols in my name uh, just to keep it simple for clients or anyone to potentially find me. Um, also on Google, if you haven't Googled yourself, you should really Google yourself. You should really... Um, Take a minute and just do it. I mean, you don't have to be famous uh, to Google yourself, but you can find stuff from the past that maybe you were using a different booking system and that will pop up. Maybe you have, you know, um, or for some reason you pop up doing some strange, odd things on there, right? Um, but there's ways to get those pictures and and get that off. So, uh Making it easy to, for your clients to find you is, is brand yourself with a simple, very clean name or your business name. We can go on to the next. All right. So this is a little on uh, putting yourself on Instagram. This would be for me, uh, I would say the perfect Instagram bio. Um, you would basically put your name, your business name, either or, um, and then use a niche word, uh, a niche keyword. Um, then we go to the category. What is your business about? Very short. You want to keep it short and sweet. Not too many words. Like I said, try not to add any numbers or, or, or letters or symbols to that. Um, and your bio. On your bio, you want to be super, super uh, just straightforward. Um, you want to add your purpose and your statement, what you do and how you can help your audience, because that will bring attention to your profile immediately as soon as they, they see your picture and uh, your bio. Um, and then the last, no, the, the your links. So any links, if you're trying to sell products or uh, if you're trying to, depending on your, you know, what, what your niche is, if you're trying to sell products or whatever your service is, you want to be, you want to add your link to your website and a link to, uh, to your page for more information about your services. Also for the location, your location is going to be, you know, you don't want to put that you're traveling to Orlando and then your, your original original business is in Texas, you just want to stick to where your business is, uh, your physical business is at. We can go on to the next one. And then this is just an example of 
how you keep it super short and sweet. Um, I think I, I think I did a pretty good job. Like it's self-explanatory right there. Um, I'm not just a barber because I have, you know, different businesses. So I put entrepreneur, um, I'm a books, the ambassador. Here's my email if you want to do any other business. And then those are my links. Uh, I use Linktree uh, for all my links. And so that's pretty simple there. And then I wanted to talk about the profile picture. So I made this one. It's super simple to make. And later on, I'll show you how to do this. It's pretty simple. Um, on our next slide, Julia, if you can go to the next one. Here, this is where I wanted to kind of show a light on the uh, profile photos. So I put yes on mine just because you can see my face there and I'm kind of, it looks highlighted. Um, the second one, I don't really advise you to post something like that because honestly, we can't see your face. I feel like that would be someone who drives Uber. Maybe? I'm not sure. You don't want to um, give the wrong, you know, idea. The third photo, I mean, that could be a good profile picture only because maybe she could be a photographer, right? I mean, you see some of her face. She's probably, I would say, a little shy because she's behind the camera, but she's a photographer. So that would be a good one. Um, and the last one, I don't think that would be a good one only because, um, you know, she's wearing sunglasses, um, she has flowers, it kind of looks like she's on a date, or maybe, you know, I don't, I have no idea what's going on in that photo, and you can't really see her face clearly. Um, so I just wanted to share some examples of what I think would be a good profile photo. We can go on to the next one. All right, before we um, go into this, Julia, do we have any questions? Or just let me know if we do. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So I just shouted out into the chat. What is the most frustrating thing for you, for our audience, about trying to market yourself on Instagram? And Geronimo answered the need to always take more and more photos and videos and um, is yeah. it, and it is now. So so we can touch on that later because he's just followed up with a, an even tighter question from what you just said. OK. As far as a profile photo. Which mm -hmm. do you think is more effective, a personal photo or a logo? And I can answer that a little bit from the booksy perspective, but um, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear that from you from looking at things as both the barber and entrepreneur dual perspective. Right. Um, so it just depends. So if you if your page is mainly your business, I would go with a logo. Right. And if it's if you're just posting photos of your work, of your barbershop and you don't have any family or personal things, then I would definitely go with the logo. And then you can make two separate uh, pages, right? So then you keep your business separate from your personal page. But if you're using, um, you know, if you're adding maybe once in a while a picture of your friends and your family, uh, and then you, you know, go on there and, and talk and maybe give your opinion and you're really active, I don't see why there would be an issue. And uh, you using your face because you can become recognizable. You know, you just want a clean photo. Uh, but I would say either or, it's just depending where you're going with your page and what your your goal is. So what, what do you think, Julia? I agree with that 100%. And the one thing that I'll say, and I'm saying this from, from the Booksy brand perspective. So I'm our social <laughs> campaign manager. So I'm one of the people that you're interacting with when you're interacting with the Booksy Instagram. And boy, for me, if you have your business logo on your Instagram and that logo is the same cover image that you have, say, on your Booksy page, that is so great because then it doesn't matter where I'm seeing your information online. I might be interacting with you on Twitter or on Instagram or even on LinkedIn or TikTok or something like that. And if you have that business logo and you're using it everywhere, that's astounding. When you, when you have inconsistent logos and you have one logo here and a different logo here, that's when it can be from from the perspective of of a business that might be looking to partner with you in the future. That's mm -hmm. when it can be a little trickier. Yes, yes, I agree. All right. Um, great me... question. That was a great question. Thanks so much. And uh, do you want to answer one more question now before we go on on the starts and stops? Yes. Yeah. Let's do Perfect. that. So Carmen says, "How can we narrow?" This is a great question. 
Um, and it relates to something you said a little bit earlier. How can we narrow down a simpler username? So maybe yeah. let's talk about that from your perspective. What had you go with Christy Clips as opposed to like the full Christina as opposed to adding your last mm -hmm. name? Like what has you make that choice? Okay, let me see. Let me think back to what, was, what I was thinking in 2014. So I made the name up Christy Clips, um, you know, in 2014. And I honestly, I made that name because I knew that I was going to Blurry Fades Expo. And I was thinking, okay, I need something short, something to the point, something that, you know, everyone calls me Christy already. So I'm like, okay, let me use Christy. Um, I needed something quick and something that was going to describe me, you know, well, for my business, because I wanted to put my business out there and know, uh, let them know that I was a, you know, barber more than a cosmetologist. Um, so I kind of just came up with Christy Clips. Um, I thought about, honestly, I thought about um, Grey Clips. Grey Clips is another like super cuts. Uh, but I just got lucky. You know, I, I didn't put any numbers in there. I was thinking I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, I think I, I was just lucky on that end and it came to me pretty quick, but let me see nowadays, you know, it's harder to get names that are just without numbers, without, you know, being so long. Um, maybe you can make up like a unique business name that doesn't necessarily have to include your name as, you know, Carmen, right? Uh, you can find, I mean, I would say there's businesses that are called like butter crust and it's a pizza spot. And if you can kind of get my drift, um, you can kind of tell that it's pizza, right? And then butter crust, it's, it's kind of catchy, right? So um, something like that, something like unique that's going to stand out and, and not necessarily have to use your name in it. That's hope that answers a little bit. Yeah. No, that's really great. And I'm going to I'm going to shout out it just for everyone listening. It you don't have to feel like it's the end of the world to have a number in your username. Right. One of the judges of a big booksy competition that we have right now, A Rod. We have a big competition with A Rod that actually goes through the end of this week and I'll drop the links in just a moment. But if you look at A Rod's username, it's A Rod 23 PR and that is so recognizable. <laughs> everyone knows, right? And then you have right. Kim Kimball and she went with Kimball Hair Care. And so it's really, it's taking something just like you said, it's taking it, it's running with it and it's being consistent. I love that you called out that you use the same thing everywhere because, oh my gosh, then people can find you. So yes. I'll drop those links and we can keep moving on. But I thank you so much for answering that question because that's so important. Yes. Thank you, Carmen, for asking. That's, that's a pretty good question. Um, so a couple of tips that I wanted to share with you guys uh, for Instagram is, uh, you know, you start doing and then stop doing this. So first off, find your niche. You know, if you are a, if you are a cosmetologist and you want to focus on one thing, you need to see the biggest pages that are out there and follow them, right? If you specialize in, in hair cutting or hair color, you want to find the biggest hair, the hair pages in that niche. If you uh, specialize, you know, in, in cutting men's hair, then you want to, Follow all the, the, the clipper companies, Wall, Andes, Babeliz, blah, blah, blah. So, I, you know, it's pretty explanatory there. Um, another thing is be consistent and persistent. Consistent is like the number one thing that I advise people, like if they're trying to uh, get noticed online and grow their, their social media accounts and persistent, right? You can't leave that out. Um, number three there is story, story, stories. People just, you know, they can go on your feed for some reason. You get way less likes on your feed than on your stories. Like they're watching your stories, uh, but they're not liking your photos. And that's fine because they have seen your stories and they are following you. Even they, the, the fact that they don't comment is, is just like they're being haters. I don't like to get negative on this account, you know, but um, they're watching you. And then they are not leaving any comments, which is fine because I understand that some people are busy um, or they don't want to start interacting and then feel like they have to like, you know, hey, you know, start talking a whole conversation or whatnot. But they are watching you on stories. So do not forget to post stories every single day. Um, then my next thing is have a specific target audience. 
okay? You have to, uh, like I said, niche down on what you are trying to portray on your uh, presence, right? You want to specifically target the type of clients that you want. So don't post something that is not going to represent you or your brand. Um, don't post, say, okay, say for me, I specialize in men's cuts. I'm not going to go out there and post, um, you know, something irrelevant to what type of clients that I want, right? Um, I'm not going to post women's haircuts, right? Me doing women's haircuts because then I'm going to start getting women's haircuts and then I don't even do women's haircuts, right? So, uh, but these are just little things that sometimes you can forget. And so I just wanted to go back on that. Um, the last thing is have one strong call to action. So what I mean by this is when you go on your page, when you go on someone's page, you don't want to get all these different call to actions and they're going to say, oh, buy my vitamins or uh, come get my haircuts or come do this or come do that, come do this. They, they're getting like mixed signals and the wrong messages. You kind of just want to stick to one call to action and like, oh, you know, I'm part of book scene. That's why I always, I always... Uh, talk about booksy because that's like my main, you know, my my prized possession uh, online. So that's you don't want to do a lot of that. Um, they're gonna get a lot of strong signals and then just kind of, you know, be be iffy about you. They're not gonna trust you, right? Um, now we go on to the next side. It says stop doing this. So posting randomly, you don't want to do that because that's not being consistent or persistent, right? Um, focusing on too much hashtag, hashtags. Now in days, like there's been so many updates, you don't have to look for 30 plus hashtags anymore. You have to focus at least, I think it's like from 7 to 15 now or something, but they just have to be, what matters is they have to be consistent and you always have to use the same ones then that's when you will get recognized out there. You can't be posting random hashtags and um, one day you post uh, two hashtags and then the next day you post 30 hashtags. For some reason, the algor al algorithm is, is weird and you just have to post the same, say, say you've been posting uh, five hashtags on all your, your Instagram feed. Stick to those, okay? Um, Next one, targeting everyone. Okay, you got to stop targeting everyone. Kind of like I said on this side, you have so many uh, call to action. You, like if you're trying to sell stuff online, you're never going to find that ideal client and you're never going to reel them in and grab their attention because you're selling all of these things. They're getting the wrong message again. Um, next thing, using uh, several call to action. That's the same thing that we just talked about. All right. Um, any questions about this? I think we have some questions over here. I hope you guys we are do. So the, the first one that I see is um, from Carmen. Carmen has two different ones. The first one is how can you create more engagement with your followers? That's a really good question. Um, so I wrote down on, I think, I don't know if it's the next slide or the next, but um, I wrote down maybe like 17 things that you can be posting about what to post, what to do on your Instagram to get more engagement. Um, I'll share with them, and then I don't know if they can screenshot or they can take a picture of them, but you can you can feel free and take a picture of them because I'm sure that these are going to help you get more engagement. And yes, uh, you can screenshot during this webinar, and also this mm -hmm. webinar will be available after the fact. It will also be available on our Booksy YouTube channel in the Booksy Education Webinars playlist, so you'll be able to find it there. Carmen has a awesome. follow-up. Um, question and then and then we can mm -hmm. move on to that section where we find that those details um, right. follow up I'm still in cosmetology school I want to offer basically all services I've learned in school so how can I niche down that's a really good question um, so basically your page is going to be you're gonna have a little bit of everything but you have to still have some kind of structure right so there is a tool on, um, I think some of the tools that I use is Planoly and Schedule and the Preview app. So basically, for me, I would say to Mondays, 
make your your audience or your your you know potential customers know that you're gonna post about haircuts. Um, you basically you're gonna have to come up with a, a strategy to post haircuts, um, waxing, uh, men's cuts, and then you know all the other services. But kind of be you know consistent with all the different services, and then they'll know like, hey, she was doing this, she was doing that. But be consistent with it, right? So um, make sure that you have a strategy strategy before you you start posting just anything on your page, right? Brilliant, excellent. Okay, do you want me to take us to the next slide? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. What to put? Oh, I can't see it. It's it's kind of small. <laughs> Thank you. Here it is. This is what what I was talking about. So, um, this is you know you have no idea what to post. You just started on Instagram and you need a little help on what to post nowadays, right? So these are seventeen engaging ideas. Um, number one, introduce yourself. Right. Every so often you can you can do this and and archive it and then bring it back or make a new one. And now with Reels being so popular, you can do it again. Um, number two, let's go with, uh, sorry. Number two, run a quiz about your industry, right? Talk about your industry, um, get a and A about it and, and just, you know, Google some questions about your industry and, and post it. You know, even though it's out there, people don't think about um, like, okay, for an, for an example, Rihanna, right? Rihanna came out with her own, um, what is it, Lon lingerie, right? And they told her, like, Rihanna, why are you coming out with lingerie? Like, there's already so many other brands, um, you know, Victoria's Secret or whatever. And sorry, guys, I'm so sorry, but this is just came to mind. So Rihanna came out with her own lingerie, and she's like a billionaire. But it's not it's not because it's already out there. It's because it's Rihanna, right? She has her own brand. So whatever's out there, you can reintroduce it to the world. Number three, um, show your, your workspace, right? Show your, your workspace, um, where you work, behind the scenes, like, you know, going into work, um, you know, when you get off of work, give your personal opinion throughout the day, you know, show your food, just to kind of like, you know, so people can get... Um, you know, can get to know you, right? And kind of engage with you that way. Um, number four, how to's, right? Um, say you learned, you know, since you're in beauty school, say you learned how to do this properly and then share it. Even though people, um, you know, the fact that you're in beauty school and that's the way you do it in beauty school and you show it online, some of the older people on social media are gonna be like, oh, you guys are doing that now? It's gonna be engaging. Right. You never know. You never know. Um, and then there's new techniques that you can show that we didn't learn. You know, I went to school in 2008. I graduated then. Like there's bylaws now or, or I, I, have, I cannot pronounce that word. So I'm not going to say it again. But there's all these new techniques that I never knew about and that are coming out now. Right. Um, number five, industry tips and tricks. That's kind of like the same thing. How to's. Um, but like I said, Google is your friend. You can find anything online, post about it and, you know, just put it out there. Number six, you're old versus you're new. This is kind of like when you started, you know, and then where you are now, or, you know, your haircut, what your first haircut you did and your haircut you did now, kind of like that. Um, number seven, share the tools you use, right? That's kind of self-explanatory. Um, that would get people talking and kind of like, oh, you use that? Like they'll start messaging you or they'll start commenting you or you'll kind of be, you know, contradicted or, you know, they'll start something up like, oh, what do you like about this too? And what do you like about that too? Or like I bought that too and it didn't work for me. And then you can share your opinion. Um, number eight, share your journey. And that's kind of like, you know, with the reels, you can do that really cool. Now you can show all your pictures and gather them up and see where, how much you've grown and see where you come from. Um, that's pretty, that's trendy right now. And uh, number nine is Q and A's. So kind of like similar earlier, we said just Q and A's, you can use the poll uh, sticker on Instagram now. 
Um, I think they're coming out with a new feature where you can ask a question and they have more uh, more answers that you can that you can use. Um, there's supposed to be a new update soon. Uh, number ten, introduce your team or your coworkers. You know, you want to, you know, show them that you're not just by yourself. Or if you have an assistant, or you know, take a group photo, or you never know. They'll be like, oh, I know that person, and then you start talking about them, or you know, stuff like that. Um, number eleven, things you wish you knew earlier. So. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example that I posted things you wish you knew earlier. I mean, maybe I would say like a lot of memes, right. That are funny. Cause I'm somewhat sarcastically funny a lot on my page, but I like to share sar sarcastic things and memes. Um, number 12, share behind the scenes. That's kind of like your workplace too. But if you have like this cool event that you're going to, or maybe a photo shoot or, you know, if you're, if it's not even a photo shoot, if you're literally setting up in your, in your space to do a shoot that you want to get, you know, uh, better pictures and you can show like your new camera you bought or the new light ring you got, or you talk about, you know, all the things you ordered on Amazon that you needed to do this, uh, professional shoot, you can do that. Um, number 13, share business, share friends, businesses and, and work. So I like to, you know, shout out and um, share a lot of the the artists that I follow. I like to share their work all the time. Um, Kimberly Tehir, I think she just joined with Booksy and she's like a new ambassador. She's so awesome. Um, she's worked on celebrities and all that. So I'm like, oh, my God, yes, she's amazing. Like, of course, why not would I share? You know, she's she's an amazing artist. Um, also, let me see, number 14 share viral content if there's um you know a funny meme that's going on like i said or something that is like um happening in the industry with barbers like you know when covid happened everybody was talking about how the barber shops or salons were still being shut down um everyone in the states had different laws that they were going by or you know so i was sharing mine and we were finding out what was happening in california or in new york um Let's see, share your unpopular opinion. So this can kind of get like a little, you know, scary at sometimes, but to each his own. Like if you want to go out there and put your unpopular opinion, you can. I would add, if you want to be super engaging, I would say go with number 15 because people are going to speak their mind, right? Um, me, I'm not so, you know, I'm not on that spectrum. I don't know if you guys know Marvy Marv. Um, on Instagram, he's kind of like out there and he speaks his mind, right? But that's not me and that's not my brand and that's not, you know, the route that I want to take. Um, but I love Marvin Marv. I met him and he's awesome. He's cool and everything. Um, but that's just not me. That's not who I am, right? Um, number 16, share a tutorial. Like I said, if you're in school or if you are, you know, at the a class, taking a class. I recently took a class with Joel Torres and he was amazing. Like, I don't know how many times I cut my finger because he was making it look so easy. Um, he taught me how to um, carve with uh, six inch shears that I've never used. I usually use like 5.5 and um, yeah, so I I learned how to carve and I should make a, a, a reel about that. That's my next tutorial there. Um, and number 17, share your reviews and your testimonials. So um, I have a lot of uh, like maybe 200 or something uh, booksy reviews and I love sharing them. Just right now, I'm not sharing them as much because uh, I'm part time behind the chair and I will share with you guys why. Um, but yes, reviews will get you the most clients and, you know, reviews are it you need your reviews. You need to show your work. So that's a mouthful. Sorry. <laughs> so do, I don't think we have any questions. Okay. We can go on to the next slide, Julia. All right. So one thing that, uh, that I like to do, uh, on Instagram before posting and after po posting are these little tips here. So number one is I got my photo or I got my reel going. 
Um, then I want to search relevant keywords in the hashtag in my niche uh, for my caption, right? Uh, I like to use Gram Grammarly. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. Um, I think later on I'll show you what it looks like so you can you guys can get it. Uh, I'm not the best writer in the world, but Grammarly is my best friend. Um, and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. It's an app. Uh, it's totally free. So right before posting, I like to search for keywords and, and use those as hashtag for my niche. Um, the second bullet here is to reply comments that, that I missed from my previous posts. So I'll go to my previous post and basically um, if I left somebody out and they say something nice or if they ask a question, I make sure I, I answer it for them. Um, that way they can, as soon as I post my next one, they can get that notification and they can like my next post, right? Um, next one is spend 15 to 30 minutes engaging with pages in similar niches to yours, right? So I will go to um, what uh, an awesome page. I mean, like wall pro page, like their stuff is awesome all the time, right? So I'll go in there and I'll engage with some of the people there and um, I'll leave comments and make sure that they, they follow me, right? Because they'll see me leaving comments on there. So that's before posting. Now, after posting, posting my, you know, I, I got my hashtag, my keywords. I've done all that. And then I will uh, post on stories. Make sure, you know, right before I post. No, I'm sorry. After I post. I want to stay engaged and to encourage um, my audience to interact with me and my, my feed, right? Not only stories, but feed. Um, next here, spend 15, 30 minutes engaging with, you know, like I said earlier before, with pages similar to your niche after posting as well because you never know, right? They'll still be on your page after um, after post. Reply to all the comments that you are getting on your new post. You want to make sure that you're engaging that way um, after you post. Don't just post and then bail and then say, oh, you know, whatever it gets, whatever it gets. Whatever comments and likes it gets, it gets. No, you want to stick around and make sure you interact with those people. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> so I just wanted to share on here um, some of the apps that I use. Uh, most of them are free. I think uh, we have here on the top left is Canva. Um, actually, I pay for that one, but when I tried it for free, I got to use everything, honestly. I just paid for it because I had to do, um, what did I have to do? I don't know. I, I think I just liked it so much that I ended up paying for it. But before that, everything was free. So I use Canva for most of my photos and my graphics. Um, I use down here, uh, down below Canva to the right is InShot. That is um, for my videos. Um, if I make any reels, it's way easier to make on there. I feel like um, if I want to add any captions to my videos or um, merge my videos, and cut and paste together my videos, that is what I use in shot. Um, that's free as well. Um, Grammarly is right here, it's, it's for my captions. And that is the circle with the little arrow here in the middle. And then if we go over to the right side, that is Facetune to edit my photos. Say like, I don't wear makeup all the time. I just want to get a little tan going in this really nice photo, but I didn't wear makeup that day. So I'll end up, you know, putting a little makeup on with Facetune. Um, also, the preview app. That is below the, the Facetune app. So the preview app has all those little squares, the color, different color squares. That is the preview app where I schedule all of my content. Um, right now I'm behind on content, but that's okay because I'm going to catch up. Um, Preview and Planoly. Planoly is another uh, scheduling content app. And Planoly, I like that because um, it gives you a whole grid of your photos and um, it lets you schedule stories. So Preview doesn't let you schedule stories, but Planoly lets you schedule a little bit more. And um, Preview is free, the Preview app. And Planoly, I pay for so, um, yeah, we can go on. Unless you guys have any questions about the apps, we can go on to the next one. I just want to say I've taken all the notes here. This is absolutely brilliant. Yay. Thank you, Julia. 
All right, so this is the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I just wanted to share, you know, everything that I have used um, for myself to grow my Instagram page. Mm, and, you know, throughout the years uh, that I have traveled everywhere and some of the things that I have picked up from other people um, that I follow as, um, you know, uh, content creators and heavy hitters in the industry. So I got, let me see, I think we have a question. How can we use Canva for our feed? So Canva, um, I use, I use to make graphics. Uh, I use Canva also to make my profile picture. So Julia, can we go back to my profile picture? I used it to uh, cut myself out and put a background on it. So yeah, if you look there, it's kind of hard to do that on anything else that I've tried, like any other apps that I tried. Canva is super easy. Um, so I took a picture that I took, that photo I took was on my iPhone. It wasn't professionally done or anything. That was a picture at a hotel, at behind the chair. <laughs> um, and I took it towards the sunlight, you know, that I had all the light from the sun. And then I literally used Canva to crop myself out and I picked a color for the background. So you can use that and it's free. Um, yeah, so let me see. Is that Canva for our feed? Yeah, so that's what I use Canva for the feed. Um, I'm not sure if you can schedule on Canva now, but I think you can. Julia, what do you use? Um, so we we use a mix of different things. I have a tendency, I, I do very much similar to you wow. where I want to be on Instagram before I'm posting. So when I'm doing that on Instagram, then I tend to be posting organically. But otherwise, <laughs> what I'm using depends on which ambassadors we're partnering with at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Do you have a dog over there? What's going on? <laughs> yes, there's a there's a deer right outside the window. So then we have we have excited canines over here. So we have we have another question though. We have a question uh -huh. from um, yes. Natalia in these last couple minutes. Um, when it comes to photography, when oh, photographing, when it comes to mm -hmm. photographing your work, mm -hmm. do you have any tips, tricks in terms of? And I'm I'm thinking that's in terms of like getting that nice angle, especially for um from from a phone, we'll say. And then yes. I'll drop oopsie news after you answer. Yes, yes, yes. So tips and tricks. I'm, I'm looking at my phone because I'm going to go to my, um, my page really quick. So right now I'm currently, you know, I haven't been posting a lot of haircut pics because a lot of my clients are uh, private and they're like kind of like the VIP. They don't want to be. They're more like uh, business uh, individuals that don't want to be on Instagram, right? But tips on how to take your client's photo. I would say I use my phone. I have, I mean, the 13 Pro, I think it's the newest phone. Um, you have to have kind of a good phone, right? So you have to have a good phone that is taking pretty clear shots. If you don't have a good phone, then get a camera. Um, I would say outside in the light is your best bet, your sunlight. Um, I've tried the light ring but sometimes it's way too bright where you can't see that fade or you can't see the colors that you did from the hair color, right? Um, so your best bet is outside against a plain, you know, all one, all one color background, um, either black or white, you know? You just want to show every, say if it's a fade, you want to show everything clearly. And I think with the sunlight, it's your best bet. You can't go wrong with, with natural light. Absolutely. And I'm going to add one more thing. So I've just dropped mm -hmm. a link right now. Right now, if you go to our Booksy Education page, you can see our Q1, our first quarter education webinars. You can also see some of our upcoming educational content. But stay tuned because we are getting very close to, to the, having the final dates and times for our second quarter webinars. And that will include especially one webinar that is specifically dedicated to taking great profile photos with your phone. So we are aware of how big of a deal that is. And really, especially when you want to be getting those client photos, how important that is. And then also, if that's something that you're interested in, I dropped the link earlier and I will drop it again in just a moment. But we have a we have three big competitions going on Booksy right now. 
we have our Discovered on Booksy competitions, and we have these competitions going for barbers, for hairstylists, and for brow and lash artists. So you could get discovered by the likes of A-Rod, Alfredo Lewis and Kim Kimball, or Yesy Lash, depending on what your main category is. And the entire focus on that is creating the best, most perfect profile that you can, including those portfolio photos. So I highly encourage you to be following all of our ambassador judges on Instagram. This is the last week to, to get involved in those competitions, and they will be posting what it is that they're looking for, what it is that they're interested in. So I'm going to drop those links. Um, one last question from Geronimo, and then we'll, we can do our sign off. I see a question. Christy, can you help me be okay with editing? my haircut photos, something about doing any editing makes me feel like it's false advertising. And I think that is a great final question to be considering right now. Yes, no, I totally understand that. Um, haircut photos, I don't know, there's some people that aren't on the fence about editing your, your haircuts. With your haircuts, don't, for me, I never edited my photos I use hair fibers. So if you want to make your fades look crisper and clean, I would say to buy hair fiber and a white uh, pencil, a white eyeliner. Uh, that is going to make everything look so sharp and clean with fades because I feel like you're a barber right now because um, you're on here. And um, But editing your photos, I'm not really a fan of that. Like I'll edit my face to put some makeup on um, I feel like that's the same. That could be the same. But, you know, to each his own. You're going to get discovered by editing your photos. Don't get me wrong. So if that's your your side of the fence, all power to you. I'd say go for it. Okay. Um, one more thing that I just wanted to mention to Carmen, if she's still in here. Um, Carmen, have you ever heard of the rule of thirds? Um, it's basically, if you want to look it up, it's a tip for photography and to get better angles for anything, okay? Um, it's, you know, you won't even learn this until you go to photography school or what, whatever it is. Um, but it basically, it places your subject, it says to be, you know, give you the whole definition, to place your subject on the left third or right third of the frame. So basically, it's going to be appealing to anybody that looks at it, right? It's just a rule, like the golden rule. So if you want to, let, let me just write that down. The rule of thirds. The rule of thirds. And if you want to look this up, that would be like the savior to your photos and even uh, photography, I mean, to uh, when you're filming. But it's really hard to do that when you're filming. That's why you have like directors of um, the movies. They have like a special person to direct the whole film. And they try to get every scene of the movie like that, like follow that uh, that rule of thirds, um, that whole, I guess, what is it? The rule of thirds, I guess. But it, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> And I think oh, I think you, what you said earlier about about following the following similar pages, following people with that similar niche and be following those hashtags that you're using that really if at the more that you do that, the more you see the content that resonates with you and the content that resonates with the people that you want to be interacting with you. And it's 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 not copying it. I mean, I mean, it, it's, it's not it's not a bad thing to be looking at how does Christy set up her photos? How does a-Rod set up his photos. How does Booksy set up, you know, the photos that Booksy puts up, what are they looking at? It's, that is a very valid thing to do, to be looking at what is it that has people engage and try to then try to take your photos and your work and have it match that. And that can be really, really valuable. Yes. You guys are so sweet. I was just writing on here. Um, thank you guys for joining. I mean, if there's no other questions, I think this was like an hour long and it went by so quick. Um, I feel like I want to do more of these webinars and give more tips and tricks on social media. So I think I'm going to start doing that. Brilliant. And I think we are going to have to have you on here again because this was fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I am dropping a few final links into the chat. And again, <laughs> and there, there goes my family. So <laughs> Julia, that, where do you live? We must be at the end. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
the, you know, the, the pets always know. So thank you everyone so much for joining us. You will be able to find this on our Booksy YouTube page. You can of course find Christy on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere online. And we look forward to having her with us again. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today at Instagram Marketing for Barbers and Beauty Pros. We hope that you have a phenomenal rest of your Monday. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye, <laughs> Bye Julia. Bye. Thank you so much.